I'll, I'll do talking with this thing. <laughs> I work for an organisation called Hope Street Urban Compassion um, as the Community Development Coordinator in Woolloomooloo, um, which involves looking after uh, three safe spaces, one in which we're in at the moment being the art space, um, the other is the cafe, the Backshed Cafe and the op shop. I came up with an idea and a group of people also that I work with um, here in Woolloomooloo became interested in the project. So what we decided to do was to actually um, get people who would not normally have the opportunity to learn uh, how to use cameras and filming and doing um, the interviewing and all the processes to actually train people how to do that and also how to tell their stories. Uh, in Woolloomooloo we have 80% of people living in housing department, which is New South Wales housing, affordable housing, and then 20% homeless. So my job here as the community development worker is to bring people together. Um, the feeling of trust I find comes across when people share their stories and they feel a trust in you holding their story. The initial draw card was um, having somewhere to live, basically. Um, I was living in, uh, and I, I had a place I was buying. I fell short of my payments, so I entered the system. Uh, into, I put my name down for Department of Housing, and this place came up. I wasn't thinking of Woolloomooloo, but when I came and saw the place, I just fell in love with it. I started volunteering down at Hope Street in the cafe. That's been a really good jumping off point for meeting people. I didn't know that volunteering could be um, such a stepping stone to other things. It, it, uh, it's all about networking, I guess. You get to meet people, you get to, to do a lot of things, um, including this very project, which is uh, teaching us a whole pile of uh, new skills. I'm actually going to TAFE to do IT studies now, so it's kind of like just when I thought it was time to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Came here in 1980, February the 28th. After that first couple of years of being in Australia, I, I, I assimilated, could be the word, and I found a lot of Aussie mates that, that I understood and they understood me. So I grew up with most of my mates were Australian, so we all got up to the same things. And it was first it was going to work, getting on the beers, the girls, and then all of a sudden the drug scene was there and it opened up. Um, it wasn't until I got older that I knew it had got out of hand and I um, actually ended up long term on the dole and um, trying to trying to wait from payday to payday to have some more. It went from being fun to being I needed it, but that addiction was so strong, it was so powerful, it was it was the love of my life. It's the worst thing to say, but when, when all you know is that 
that thing is your love of your life and it overrides everything that you want to do or be, that, that can really strike you pretty powerfully. From that time on, I ended up homeless. I had a really good job I was holding down and just couldn't cope. Ended up on the streets here in Woolloomooloo because I'd exhausted every other avenue to go and stay. And I came down here because I heard there was a homeless system here that, that actually cared. And I heard there was a group of homeless people that I could actually feel comfortable around. up in Epping. Um, my dad and mum lived down here for a while and then they moved out and they ended up at Epping. It was a safe sort of area for us when we were little but we were allowed to go out and walk around. We could go up the cross and buy an ice cream and you know go for a walk and things and um, the cross and that was more bohemian and we used to love it you know coming down here it was, um, it was good yeah. Well it's really a family business. I've got you know my brother and his wife and his boys, my nephews, and all the kids, some of my brother's kids and all mine all did, um, you know, and they were going to uni, all come down and work there. We call it the Willamaloo Finishing School. <laughs> well, it was about 1977, and um, I'd always wanted to go to America, and I'd actually had enough money to do this. Did you fly straight to San Francisco? Or you straight to San Francisco, uh -huh. yep. And um, I didn't get out of there for a year. It was probably the last flowering of uh, the gay society in San Francisco before the plague hit. And that was the most amazing trip. I, can't, I, I, I think I matured as a gay man. Going there into, a, a, into a, an environment where being gay was normal. It was every day. Uh, all the businesses, this is in Castro, um, all the banks, the chemists, the supermarkets are all owned and run by gay men and women. It's just guys like me, you know, it's amazing. And, I was, and on the plane on the way back, I thought, where am I going to go when I get back? It was caps and patches, you know, and it was like drag shows forever and I didn't really fit. We called it Midnight Shift, of course, for Donna Summer's, after Donna Summer's song, because it was after midnight that the shift really got going. Nobody came to after midnight. But it was still the old configuration with the drag shows and, and you know, the platform used to slide out. I said, good, that's all dance for. Okay, so we're ready to go, and like I said, you can you can control the camera now from the computer, okay? So all we need to do down here, we're heading to director says, Report. rolling, we hit record. <laughs> Got me out there, but anyway, uh, we'll be filming all around Wollongoo and we can people. I guess I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, I've got a very good ear for hearing music, and I think I know how to structure sounds. But my, my forte is, is actually expressing it by singing it. I love to sing. Everyday People. Yeah, yeah. Um, Everyday People, it's a classic 70s song. When I first recorded it, I was only recording that to see if I could do an old school song with a new dance beat to see if I could find a market to release it. But it took a shape of its own because Homeless people are everyday people, like everyone else. It's just they 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 do things differently. As a child, my mum says when I was about six years old. She remembers me back in Auckland holding a, the back of a cord of a washing machine and standing there singing into it and I had all the kids sitting around listening to me sing. So I always knew I wanted to sing. I always was never shy of singing. One, 
two, three. Give me an F. Give me a Y. Give me a D, N, E, Y. Sydney, Sydney. We love Sydney, Sydney. Oh, Sydney, oh. Sydney, yeah, Sydney. Sydney. We are Sydney. Sydney, you know me. I can go, I can really, really. In 1982, I uh, tested positive for HIV. It was the long haul. There was people starting to drop like flies. Um, and it was basically all the people who used to come to the ship, all that demographic of the gay community, was systematically, and still being so, wiped out completely. And my friends and acquaintances and, and everyone that I call family are dropping, just dying, growing old and dying. Uh, my mother was beside herself, she was just, she said, this is like living in a war, she said, but, because she lived during the Second World War, but at least, she said, the young, young men used to go away to die, and stay here and go old and die in a matter of months, you know, it was a hideous thing. There's a lot of criticism and stuff, you know, kids who are selling drugs and doing all the wrong thing and stuff like that, but you tend to forget all the ones that are very successful and all the good kids, you know, and there's heaps of those. I've seen the value of planting seeds, at least, if nothing else. If you can't get the result that you want straight away, you plant a seed and move on. And it, it will make someone, hmm, if you plant a big enough seed, it'll lodge there. it. And will work its magic eventually. You know, there's a million different things that a human being can be. And if you want to keep writing that, if you're going to get RSI writing a little label for each one, go right ahead. But don't stick at any of them. You love who you love. It doesn't matter. I know it's like to have a dream. I've had most of mine come true. So if you have a dream, it'll come true. Guaranteed. Just going to keep dreaming. That's all. I think the one thing about Wollamaloo you'll find is that you get the rich and the poor. You've got Russell Crowe and Nobody Crowe living in the streets. Um, you know, you, you get a lot of judgment, but that's life. That's life. People have just got to get over themselves. We as homeless judge the rich, or, or the middle class judge the, the rich and the poor. That's just life. I think that happens in every society. I think what makes Wollamaloo unique is that Wollamaloo's got a cross-section of people. Excellent. <laughs>